So today we're going to get started with animation online using the Wic Editor. If you go to wiceditor.com, you will come to this welcome screen, and there's even a little introductory video that you can watch that will get you started. But we're going to jump right in and launch the editor for Wic. Wic is a real basic online computer animation software that has some of the basic animation concepts that we're going to learn here right off the bat. So I'm just going to delete my, I was working on this before. All right, so when we come in here, what you see is your stage or what they call the canvas in Wick. You have a toolbox across the top with a, a cursor or arrow pointer, which allows you to manip manipulate your objects. And then you have some other tools, drawing tools in here, as well as fill and stroke. There's a properties inspector on, on the right. You have a few other controls up here at the top, delete, copy, paste, undo, redo. These are your playback controls. And down on the bottom, you have a timeline. So we're going to make a little bouncing ball today just using a simple, simple circle. So if I grab this ellipse tool and come out and draw, and as in many drawing programs, if I hold down my shift key, that will lock the uh, X and Y, the height and width of my drawing. I'm going to grab that cursor and select my circle. And once I have that done, I get these handlebars, which allows me to scale, rotate, all that good stuff. I can hit Control Z to undo. I can come over here to my fill color and change my fill color. And I'll also have a stroke on here. To set that stroke to being none, I'll set the value of that to be zero. So there's my ball. I'm going to hold down my shift key and scale that down just a little bit. You can put that ball anywhere. Let's just put it here toward the middle, and let's get started. So I want this ball to fall down and then bounce back up. I'm going to simply copy and paste this ball in order for me to make copies of it. So down here I have my timeline with my playhead. And if I press enter right now, it plays, but there's it's not doing anything because I only have one frame. This green circle down here represents a frame that has something in it. We call that a keyframe. And we are going to make a new keyframe for each one of these actions. So we're going to manually keyframe this animation. So in order for me to do that, I will select my circle and hit Control c on my keyboard to copy. Click underneath frame 2, it will make a new keyframe. Now you see this keyframe has an empty circle, meaning that I have a keyframe, but there's nothing in it. I'm going to hit Control v to paste. It's going to paste that circle right back where it was. And just by pressing my down arrow key, I'm going to move it down a little bit. Now, on my playback controls, there's this feature called onion skinning. And what onion skinning does is it, you'll see it adds this um, span on my timeline. And it sort of shows me a grayed out version of the pre previous frame. So I can see what I'm doing as I'm going. So I'm going to follow that process. I'm going to copy, make a new frame, and hit paste. And I'm going to move that down. Now, I can't see that first circle because my onion skin jumped with me, but I can drag that onion skin over, and it's a little bit lighter. You can see how this is going to start. I can continue this process, making a new frame and pasting as I go down, and I will just keep doing that. Now, of course, I'm pasting a frame from way before, And one more here. And so that'll basically be where the bottom of my circle is. Now, just for a moment, I want to talk about the timing of this. When you drop an object, it gets affected by this mysterious force called gravity. What gravity does is gravity says, hey, you know, I'm going to pull you down. But when you drop something, it doesn't start falling at full speed right away. It starts slow, and then as it goes down, it keeps falling, it keeps picking up speed until it reaches what's called 
terminal velocity. That's the fastest that that particular object will go. We're not really worried about this reaching terminal velocity, but we do need to think a little bit about the fact that as this falls, it's going to go faster, meaning that the space between my frames is going to be more, all right, as that falls. So it's going to start slowly and then pick up speed, meaning it's going to jump farther. Now, when it bounces back up, it's going to bounce, depending on how hard it is and what kind of surface it's bouncing on. It's going to maybe bounce back up, or if it's a super ball, it could bounce even higher, or if it's something that's got a lot of squishiness to it, it's going to bounce just a little bit. So you can kind of adjust this ball, but we want to work back up here by just simply pasting. Now what you might want to do, let's go back to this last frame, is copy the last circle. And when I go to this next frame, this eighth frame, and I paste it, it's going to be a little bit above there. And we'll just work our way back up. And of course, as it rises, it's going to because of gravity, lose speed. It's going to work its way back up here. And you might decide it's not going to reach the same height as what it had to begin with. Get that closer together. So the timing of that, okay, and you can turn on the onion skinning the whole way to see that. Now if I press my enter key, there's my animation. It has a nice drop at the beginning, and then it bounces kind of quickly back up and slows at the top. You can go to any one of these frames. I'll press enter again to stop that animation. I can turn off the onion skinning, go to each of these frames, and adjust anywhere that I want them to be. If I feel like they're not in the right spot, maybe I want this one here. I can just arrow, press my arrow key down and make adjustments. I can also play by pressing the green arrow key over here. All right, so now that took how long? Well, there's a frame rate. How many frames that we have? In this case, we are 12 frames per second. If I go up to this gear cog in the corner and change, there's my frame rate, 12 frames per second. And because I have 12 frames, it took one second for the ball to drop and bounce back up. If I double that rate at 24 frames and hit apply, then close that. Now when I press enter, it's bouncing twice as fast because now it's only taking half a second to do the same amount. Generally speaking, 24 frames per second is a very standard animation rate. Um, movies, television run close to 30. So if you want to be in that vein. So 12 might be a good place to start, but being closer to a more realistic speed for video would be 24. And I can set that back to 12 because that's how I designed it originally. Apply and then close. So play around with the timing of the balls. I want you to have 12 frames of a circle that goes straight down and straight back up. And it will automatically loop it like this when you play it. So good luck making your first animation with a bouncing ball in WIC.